everybody, Meg Martin here, Executive Director of Interfaith Works, and today we're doing something a little bit different for Lena and Olympia. Um, we are hosting today a community memorial at Sergio's, our day center, so I'm here right now, and um, we are honoring about a dozen or more people who have passed away while um, either living outside or living in shelters or who had been recently housed after experiencing homelessness for a long time. And I talk a little bit um, just about how, what happened in this last year or more, really during the pandemic, so many people have passed away that it's been really difficult to honestly keep up with honoring all of their lives in the way that we typically do. So whenever somebody passes away, we try to have a personalized memorial for them. Sometimes people's families are involved, sometimes they're not. Sometimes we host them at one of their favorite spots in town, or um, we always have food that was their favorite snacks or beverages or whatever. And um, it's just gotten really hard to be able to keep up with that during the pandemic and, and until now. So this memorial was a, it was a partnership, a joint effort with Quixote Village. And um, we were able to have a really beautiful time. And so you're gonna see a little bit of that today, but you're also gonna hear from some members of the community about memories that they might have or why it's important for us to be doing this and to bring awareness. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Meg. I'm the executive director for Interfaith Works. Hi, Meg. Hi. Um, it's really nice to see so many of you out here today. Feel free to grab chairs around if you want to or if you're more comfortable standing, that's totally fine. Just uh, try to be mindful. This is a pathway that is often heavily used, so just keep an eye out for other folks that might be coming through here. Um, so today we are doing a community memorial for many people who have passed recently. And to be honest, you know, for those of you that know Interfaith Works, we always try to do memorials for people when they pass away. And I'm just gonna be really real, it's been really hard to keep up with because of how much loss we've all experienced. And I got kind of uh, really overwhelmed by it this last year. And we kept not being able to like do the memorials when we needed to do them. And it became really sort of like I was frozen not knowing how we could actually do it. And so that's where the idea for this came up, was to just kind of honor everybody who we've lost. And some people's names um, we weren't able to include on the flyer for whatever reason. Some folks we don't have photos of here. We know that we aren't, you know, perfect. We didn't get everybody. But I hope that today is the time for everybody that's here to be able to hold in your hearts, hold in your minds, and if you feel like you want to, share a memory of anyone who we lost from the unhoused community um, over the last recently, like in the recent times. Um, up here today, um, I also want you to feel free to come check out the altar. If you want to add anything to it, you're welcome to. If there's any photos that you have or anything like that that you want to add, feel free, this is for all of us. And as you know, if you've been to one of our memorials before, we always have an open mic um, after the beginning introduction where people are free to share stories, memories, or whatever feelings might be coming up for you. We've got a lot of people here today, so I ask that we try to be concise and say just what's on our hearts and minds in the moment. Um, we had a memorial, a different memorial on Sunday, and, and so some of you have already heard me say this, but it's really been on my mind a lot that 
There's a saying, it's attributed to many different people, so it's a little hard to source, but that the first death that a person experiences is the one of their physical body, and the second death that a person experiences is the last time anyone says their name. And that's part of why we feel like it is so important to make sure that we say people's names, that we come together, that we share photos, and that we remember that no one's life is invisible and no one's death should be invisible either. Um, I know a lot of you, I don't know everybody, but I care about you all so much. I'm so grateful that you're all here. Thank you to all of the other service providers that are here today too, from the city. Thank you to David from Coyote Village for helping set up the sound system. Thank you to um, Interface staff for getting snacks and food, and Tamara for making amazing food as well for everybody. Um, I'm just really glad we're all here. <laughs> it matters to show up, it matters to show up for each other, and I know we do that in ways big and small every day, but I'm really happy to be here with you all. So if you want to, a uh, couple things. There's a bowl of stones here. If you feel like you want to share um, anything at all, you can come up and take a stone if you feel moved to do that and share a memory or a thought. And then when you're done, you can put it anywhere you want. Either there's a couple of plates here for offerings that we can put there or if you want to just put them on the table, that's fine too. Additionally, um, we have somebody here who has a setup in the room back here. Um, you know, part of why we do memorials as well is to bring awareness to the community about what's going on with people who are living outside, who are living in shelters, and what the realities are for y'all's life, right? And so if you feel like you wanna share that, um, your memory or your experience of being here today that could go to a broader community, there's an opportunity for that too. And it's in the back here, there's video and audio if you want that. And we put out a, um, podcast twice a month that tries to bring awareness to the community about what's going on. So with that, I'm going to open it up. I ask that we try to be respectful and timely, and I will do my best. Brianna's up. Aw, oh, sure ain't. <laughs> okay. I took care of my, my second husband that had titanium hips and uh, AFib and dementia. I took care of him from 2020 to 2021. He died and uh, I was his second husband. We have two kids that is 40 and 20, 20, 20 and he was the best man I've ever had, and now D.L., he was my liaison when I stayed at First Christian Church. We would take people that were sick up to Interfaith, and David Slack and Angela would make him get him medical beds. And I miss D.L., and D.L. was my buddy, and I really miss him, and... I wish he was still around. Isaac was our peer, mine and Andiel's, and we lost Sergio, and I found him dead seven and a half hours across from the library in the bushes. And I called 911, he didn't have no pulse, no nothing. I called 911, and we lost him, and I miss him too, and I'm done. Well, um, hello, my name is Doug Schultz, and this is my dog, Sadie. And this right here, Paige? 
But just for Interfaith and everybody, just for, well, uh, big shout out to Interfaith and Meg. Meg's been a saver. She's, she's my little, she's my angel. And um, I don't know what to say. We're here at the memorial for a bunch of friends that have passed, and they just seem to be passing a lot of people. But, you know, we're all getting older. We go to more funerals and weddings now, so that's when you know you're getting old. And uh, Meg got me a, a place to live. Been there for almost two years now. Been housed. Um, we need to take care of these people out here. There's a lot of people that still need still need lots of help, you know. Um, it's going to take people maybe listening to this to dig in their pockets deep and, you know, just help out where you can. That's all I ask you, you know, just help out where you can. Um, I don't know what to say as far as miss a lot of people, lost a lot of people. We still got a lot of good people around here too. I have a friend over here named Rose. She's my other angel. Um, so hopefully they're building a new building right next to ours. There's 65 more apartments they're going to have to come online here soon for hopefully people out there, maybe in the jungle. And, and I mean, they've housed a lot of people in the last two years. And I appreciate that a lot. I mean, a lot of people do. You know, let's keep up the good work and let's just hang in there, guys. And, I appreciate you guys and thank you very much for all the help you've given me. And my dog Sadie, you know, she's up wandering around again. She's that dog without a leash, you know. <laughs> she's been she's rebellious, like, she's rebellious like that. But anyway, I want to thank Meg personally for everything that she's done. And, and uh, if anybody deserves a hero award, it's that girl there, okay? So. Take care of yourself and good luck to all you other people out there. Hopefully I can get out soon, okay? All right. Thanks, man. Okay. Good. All right. Hi, my name is Rose and um, I wanted to just say thank you, my deepest thank you to Interfaith and Meg for my apartment and for the years that I lived at the shelter, I became homeless. And uh, actually through no fault of my own. And uh, I would have died on the streets if it wasn't for inner faith. I had no idea how to be homeless. Um, I had no idea what to do. And I was put in the shelter pretty much right away, thank God. And I mean that, really. I had no idea what to do. And I was homeless about five years altogether. And I got to stay in the shelter pretty much the whole time. And I'm so grateful because I would have never made it if I wouldn't have been able to live there. And I got my apartment through Interfaith. And I've been there, like Doug, almost two years now. And I was friends with Jody. She was my only friend, really. And I miss her terribly. I did everything I could to help her. Um, I didn't really help her anymore, and I did. And um, I always miss her. And, uh, thank you for having the memorial today. It's the first memorial I think I've been to for many, many years, it seems. And I can't believe Deal's gone. I haven't even started dealing with that, but um, thank you, Meg, for doing so much for us. And I hope people will realize that, you know, being poor is just 
a fact of some of our lives and, you know, I hope people can realize that it's inhumane to be homeless. Thank you. And go. Hi, my name is Lawrence Nabati, um, a former guest of, guest resident of the old uh, FCC Unity Commons. Um, I now work for them. Um, I guess my main focus right now would be on people who have come and gone um, and interfaith. I want to say that interfaith has been there when they never had a place, or not never, did not have a place to stay. Um, they've been through it all the way through, providing these shelters and places to stay, safe places to stay for the homeless community. Even after these people, uh, my friends have gone, um, they're still there for this community honoring them in many ways, uh, memorials, um, days of remembrance, um, and uh, coping with these kind of traumas that we also face now on the other side as a, I want to say a staff member. Um, it's a close-knit community with the interfaith. Um, they provide a lot with this community and for those who have come and gone again. Thank you for my time, your time, and uh, you guys have a good day. And that's it. Hi, um, my name is Kat, and I just wanted to say a few words today so that people could be um, a little more educated and a little more conscientious of the things going on right around them in the world. And if you want to make a difference, um, everyone would love the help in the volunteer work, especially Interfaith Works. They do so much community outreach. It's amazing. Um, I truly have never seen such uh, an organization that has just grown in size and multiplied um, with volunteers and voluntary donations and just so many people wanting to help and just lend a helping hand wherever they can for a lot of homeless ones on the streets and then even people that are still, you know, are housed and have hardships. They, um, they all need a little bit of help sometimes, especially if you don't have family and you're not from this state maybe and you don't have anybody here except yourself and that's what happened when I came to Olympia. Um, I got out of a very abusive relationship and thankfully he went to prison. So where I got away from him is where I felt like I got a blessing. And there's so many people that just came together and made sure that I was okay. And most of these people didn't have much themselves, but they were willing to share whatever they had with me. So I decided to stay and, um, I was an addict for many years. I'm still an addict today, but I'm not actively using. I have, um, in my recovery, it's taken a long time, but I've gotten to know myself better and to know that I really, I really feel a certain type of way about people and I just love them. And if I can help them live the best life they're able to, then I want to. And, uh, I just wish more people knew that it's not always about the drugs. Sometimes it's emotional problems and mental illness, which is on the rise so much nowadays. Um, so many different things out there, but just knowing that you can make a difference a little bit if you want to. Um, there's so many people that would be so grateful for any donations or just, um, just a happy, smiling face going down the road instead of looking at somebody with bags and pushing a shopping cart and thinking the worst of them. Think about that there used to be somebody just like you and unforeseen time and occurrence happens, but 
you can make a difference. Just know that. So every day, please be blessed and just know that it's better to spread the love than the hate. Peace. So as always, you can catch Lena and Olympia twice a month. Um, and we're on YouTube, Interfaith Works, Thurston County, on Facebook. And we hope that you will enjoy this episode. Thanks so much. Thank you.